In the world of automotive and street rod, custom paintwork is a signature craft that elevates vehicles from complex machines to works of art. From stripes and flames to portraits and landscapes, the art form of custom automotive painting is only limited by an artist's ideas and skill set. Wyotech's Mike Fisher, custom paint instructor of over 20 years, is here to take us through the basics of airbrush painting, starting with a sunset landscape. We'll start with the Iwata airbrush. This is a dual action airbrush, push down for air, pull back for paint. Also, it is gravity feed. We need to tape off the horizon line so that we actually have a reference between our sky and our ocean. And that'll also allow us something to tape to so that we can do those two pieces separately. got my horizon in and now I've got something to differentiate between the sky and the ocean. The other thing I need to put in right now is that vertical line and I want to put it right dead center but I don't want to mask it off I just want to have a slight glow in there. Now that I've got that done I want to go ahead and mask the bottom portion of it off right at the horizon line. I'm using white in my airbrush and I'm going to tint this white scene with color. I'm practicing the horizontal strokes and I'm trying not to create heavy ends and that's accomplished by pulling the trigger back slightly but on the ends actually letting the movement of the airbrush move a little bit past where I'm letting off the paint. Next, to paint in the sun, Mike cuts out a paper circle stencil and gently applies it to the canvas. To prevent overspray, he shields the rest of the painting with additional paper. Lastly, Mike fills in the circle. He creates a glow effect by moving his airbrush further from the canvas to create a broader, more diffused brush stroke. Now he's ready to move from the sky to the ocean. coming out, pulling the trigger back, doing some very bold lines and in, doing some very detailed strokes. This will help me accomplish the background as well as some of the foreground highlights that we have on the clouds and the waves. With airbrush, distance is everything. The closer the airbrush to the canvas, the more defined the line. Now we're gonna put the color in. And I'm going to switch to another airbrush that already has some yellow in it. And I like to start with the bright yellow and go to the orange and then to the red. Now we want to come back in and put some highlights back in the painting. The reason I'm putting the highlights back in is I want to bring that foreground and background image back together with this. I need to bring a highlight on the ocean waves, especially right in the center, and I need to bring some highlights in the sun area. These extra little highlights add a lot of detail to the art and just kind of finishes it off. I'm happy with it. It's important to note that I wasn't wearing safety protection because I needed to present this properly by speaking. So I normally would wear a half mask, followed by, when we do our clear coat, our full face supplied air respirator system. And we're using rubber gloves to clean our paint gun and our airbrushes. Well, I hope this inspires you to go out and create your own artwork. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other webisodes and tech tips available on our website.